righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a late, out of date, raw review. Um, not really a good show there. It's not a terrible show. It wasn't the worst show of all time, but Jesus Christ was pretty cheap there, pretty boring, let's see. It started off with Chris Jericho doing the highlight reel, talking about how he might be going to SmackDown when he, he wins his match at the pay-per-view. Then Miz came out, oh no, this is Miz TV now, so they switch the sets or whatever. And then Dean Ambrose came out. Oh no, this is now the Ambrose Asylum. So they put the little board and the chairs, shit like this. So to be honest, and then Ambrose gave him the DDT once again to the Miz. Um, a little bit on the cheap side there, you know. First it's the highlight reel, then it's Miz TV. And then it's the, the Asylum or whatever. Oh, oh my god, it's so trippy there. Um, in reality, it was a bit cheap there. Um, and this was meant, meant to set up a tag team match player for the main event. When you start off with a weak segment there and then it's a cheap main event. Uh, a tag match in the main event, you know you're going to get a weak show there. First match, Matt Hardy defeated Sheamus. He was calling for some delete chance or whatever. People were excited for this because of the delete chance that were taking place. The match itself ugh, was okay, I guess. It's Matt Hardy there. But uh, if, if Matt Hardy was out of this match and it was somebody else, we'd be saying, who's the fat guy that's moving around like a 50, 60-year-old man there? But forget I said that there. Matt Hardy with a victory there. I'm so happy. I mean. um, second match, Gallagher and... Austin Aries defeated Neville and Perkins. I'm so happy. I mean, um, just, <laughs> this fucking cheap there for fuck's sake, man. It was okay, but it's like, who gives a fuck? Who gives a flying fuck here? Third match, Kalisto defeated Braun Strowman in this dumpster match. So it was pretty much like a casket match there. It's a dumpster on the side of the ring. So, uh, Strowman beats him up most of the match. And then for some reason, Kalisto drop kicks him and then Strowman lands in the dumpster. So, <laughs> Bra Braun Strowman was beat. Has he won a match yet in WWE? I Every match that I can remember, he seems to lose there. He was beat by Roman. He was beat by Sami Zayn. Or Sa he had to beat Sami Zayn inside of a, an amount of time or else Zayn would win or something. And now he's been defeated by Kalisto. So I'm not sure where... where how we're supposed to take him seriously after this, where they're going with this. He's probably going to get beat up by Roman at the pay-per-view there. You can't lose to Kalisto and then beat Roman. I don't know there. Wouldn't make much sense. But um, So after the match, Strowman is pissed off. He beats him up, puts him in the dumpster and then rolls him off of the stage, but he only fell about this high off the ground. Realistically, it wasn't, the fall was about this, 
this much may be there, you know? The dumpster falling on the ground. It wasn't a big drop. It looked pretty cheap compared to the Roman thing from the week before or whenever it happened there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They make him lose against the midget. It makes him look stupid. Then he's upset because he lost. So, like, against Roman Reigns, it's Braun being all alpha male-ish, beating up. Roman Reigns injuring him pretty badly, throwing him off of that big drop with the stretcher. This time he gets beat by a midget. He's pissed off and he beats him up out of pettiness. He beats up Kalisto out of pettiness. And then he throws him off the dumpster like maybe three, four feet off the ground. Kind of makes him look silly, to be honest there. You know what I'm saying? I enjoy that they're using dumpsters, making him fall off and shit like this. I enjoy that, but as far as building up Strowman is concerned, it kind of makes him look like a big dumbass, <laughs> to be honest. It was okay, you know, but... Uh, it doesn't compare to the Roman Reigns thing from a few weeks ago there. Fourth match, Dana Brooke defeated Alicia Fox. It's You're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this there. Dana Brooke against Alicia Fox. Who the fuck gives a shit about this, man? Complete trash right there. Fifth match, Finn Balor, Big Cass, and Seth Rollins defeated Joe Anderson and Gallows. They were talking about Finn Balor, Anderson, and Gallows. I was thinking maybe Finn was going to join them and they would have beat up Big Cass and whoever else was there, Rollins and shit, but... Uh, we just got a boring six-man match there that nobody gave a fuck about. Finn Balor got a concussion, so he's having just tiny matches and tag matches and until he gets better, I guess. That's pretty much what this was. Finn Balor is injured. He can't have a real match, so... Here's some kind of six-man garbage match there because Finn can't ha have a real match at the moment. Then we had Alexa Bliss arguing with Bailey. Sasha Banks came out and they were arguing and Alexa Bliss ran away. Then she came back and hit Bailey and... Sa Sasha was running after her and nobody gave a flying fuck! Just wasting energy just trying to explain this crap. They had a boring segment with boring bitches there, right? Well, I like, I like the women there, but this segment sucked, to be honest. And this led to a, a match there. Sasha defeated Alexa Bliss by countout. Because Alexa Bliss walked away. Thanks there. Thanks for wasting our fucking time with these shitty boring matches there. I guess I'm going to have to become a Smackdown fanboy from now on or something. Because this fucking sucks there. Unless I become a TNA fan. I mean, I'd have to become a Smackdown fanboy after this. Seventh match, we had Kurt Hawkins cutting the shit promo. Apollo Crews comes out, beats him in like a minute. The match itself was cheap, but Titus O'Neil came out with this new Titus O'Neil manager gimmick, I guess. He was never good enough in the ring, I don't know, maybe because of the thing that happened when he hugged McMahon or whatever. He's been taken off the, the as a wrestler and he's a manager now, but 
maybe there's a tiny bit of potential there, probably not, you know, because Titus O'Neil can talk. Apollo Crews has zero personality, can't talk. It's old school booking. You got a guy that can talk and a guy that can wrestle. Just the problem here is that the manager is seven feet tall, Titus O'Neil. <laughs> And the other one's four foot eight, so there's a bit of a problem on that front, size wise, but it makes sense when it comes to Titus O'Neill being able to talk. Maybe he'll be able to do something with Apollo Crews, who fucking knows there. Who fucking knows? <laughs> In the main event, Miz and Bray Wyatt defeated Ambrose and Chris Jericho. Wyatt appeared at the end and beat them all up there, including the Miz or whatever. Just a boring show, to be honest. It was okay. It wasn't like a show that completely sucked there, but like there was nothing. You know, it wasn't a good show, far from it. If you were looking to be entertained, or if you were looking for something, anything, it, it wasn't here. This was just a very mediocre show there. Fucking lame, mediocre show with absolutely jack shit happening. Absolutely fuck all happening. It was boring there. It's... <laughs> You know, it's kind of okay, but fucking cheap, boring, unimpressive, unentertaining, just a big fucking waste of three hours there. But hopefully it's going to be better on SmackDown tonight with Jinder Mahal. Fuck. Big sexy Jinder Mahal tonight. Fuck, maybe he can save wrestling or something. I don't know. Fuck. Until next time, peace.